Hi everybody, welcome to today's how-to guide, how to remove a radiator. To do this job, you're gonna need a few tools, not much. Two spanners, I've got a spanner and a pair of grips. You're also going to need a radiator bleed key, a couple of caps to go onto the radiator valves once they're disconnected. In my case, they're half inch, so I've got two half inch ones. Um, you have a three quarter size up. Um, and I use water bags to get the water out of the radiator. You can also use a bucket, it's got to be quite shallow, a, uh, a de decorator's tray, a bowl. Uh, bowls you'll be emptying them quite a bit, depending on the size of the rad. Um, or a washing up bowl, yeah. Um, there's lots of things you can try. I like to use these, make sure they've got no holes in the bottom. You can get them from DIY stores, building stores, plumbers merchants obviously, and uh, they do the trick nicely. Firstly, you've got to turn both valves off. In this case, we've got one thermostatic valve on this side, and as with all valves, righty-tighty, lefty-loosey, on the thermostatic valve that was even easier because we've got numbers on there. This is Goose, our cat. He's very hungry at the moment, he wants to be fed. So there we go. I've turned the valve all the way around from number five to zero. Um, they've also got a frost setting on, which can be a bit risky if that's the bottom setting. We recommend take it around to zero and that should be off. As with all valves, with age, they can fail to shut off properly and they'll let by water, uh, which I'll explain a bit further as we get a little bit further along. Um, thermostatic valves are slightly more prone to letting by um, and you, you'll know about it because when you're trying to get the water out of the radiator, the water won't stop running. Um, so in, uh, in this case to start with, you've just got to turn it off and you find this out later if the valve's not shutting off properly. So that's that one. This valve on the other side is going to need a spanner. White cap pulls off. Sometimes you need to use a screwdriver to take the cap off. Or a spanner. You're going to want to turn the valve clockwise, righty tighty. There we go, that's off. Valves can vary, some might turn a lot more than others, might have 10, 15 rotations, while others might have five. Um, all just varies valve to valve. Uh, so just make sure you've got it all the way. Don't try and overturn it, because you can snap those bits of brass off the top. Especially once they get older, they can become a little bit brittle. So get it until it feels like it's shut, and then if you feel like it is maybe letting by when you're draining and it's not shut off, then you can give it another wince um, to see if it just needs to go a little bit further sometimes. But you're better off playing on the side of caution um, and you, you know when it's got to the end. So now with both valves off, we can drain the water out of the radiator. I'm gonna take one of my trusty bags. Tuck the bag around strategically so you're going to catch the water once we've done undone this nut. Not the bottom nut, the top nut, the nut connecting to the radiator. The bottom nut, this is the live side, the top nut, this is what we can call the dead side because it's contained the water inside this radiator. So if you span it, you're going to undo the nut. Um, just to be aware before you do it, depends what type of system you have. If you've got a pressurised system, that being a combi boiler or a system 
converted to be sealed, then you'll have a bit of pressure inside the radiator and to expect a little bit of a spray or gush or force behind the water coming out. If you've got an old gravity system, not so much. You still will get some sort of force with the water coming out, but not quite if you've got a pressurized system. So you've got to take down the pressure first and the, the pressure could be sitting at one bar, two bar. Um, you're best to do this maybe when the system is not running, when you've not got the heating on. Um, if you've got the heating running, the system's going to be up to a high temperature, also a higher pressure, which means you'll have a higher pressure inside the radiator uh, to be aware, and the water will be hot. So a cold radiator is best to drain down. Um, you can achieve a cold radiator by maybe turning the valves off and then coming back to drain the radiator half hour later once it's cooled down. That's an option. So, with the spanner on the top nut, you're going to turn it lefty-loosey this time. I'd always give it a few turns, then a wiggle, because you can start to get the water coming out that way. Here we go, the water's coming out into my bag. The pressure has gone off, so now it's just going to drain in. So now literally with the end of the radiator inside the bag, I can take my radiator vent key, put it on the vent and crack it open. This is going to allow the water to pass out of the radiator a lot quicker with gravity having its magic effect. Bag number two. Seems to be on quite tight the front. There we go. You can see maybe there's just a small dribble coming out. You can see the last of the water dripping out of the radiator, not out of the valve. We can see the valve is also okay on this side, not letting by. So almost job done. There will be a little bit of water left in the radiator, which I want to get out. What I'm going to do, excuse me, mister, is shut the vent on the radiator. This is quite important if you're gonna flip the radiator upside down, because if there is a dribble, it can come out there. And especially if you're going to put the radiator onto nice carpet, then that will wreck your carpet if there's some dirty water coming out of there. So the vent's shut, I've just now got an open end at the bottom, both sides. I'm going to scoop this end of the radiator into the bag also. And what I'm going to do is tip the last bit of the water in the radiator into the bag by carefully lifting it and tipping it. Now this radiator is quite big, I'm just about to get it, probably can't go no bigger than a one man job. I'm 
And that'll be that. I know it's empty now. I can hook it back on the brackets on the wall. And that's back on there and that's ready to be taken off and left wherever you want to leave it or you've got to do whatever you've got to do. One other final tip, what I like to do is put a little bit of tissue in both the ends of the radiator. So when you flip the radiator, there's no way not even a, a drop is going to ping out and ruin the floor. Okay, so a bit of tissue in both ends. Um, Mr. Goose is in the way. Come on, buddy. So I'm going to lift it up and flip it. There we go. Now, in my case, this is ready to go and skip. See you later. Okay, so now with your bags or buckets out of the way, drained, uh, the last thing to do is to cap off the valves. Uh, this is recommended if the valves are going to be left for a while. If you're putting a new radiator straight on, then no need. But if you're going to decorate the room and leave the place for a day or so, uh, uh, it's best to cap the valves in case they did suddenly decide to fail. So in this case, it's a half inch and there's a little rubber washer inside to make a seal righty tighty on there. You can almost get away with just doing it hand tight, but give it a nip and that's it. Now, if anyone's got a sharp eye, they'll have noticed I was wrong earlier. That side is not half inch, it's actually three quarter. So I'm going to have to find where I've got a three quarter cap to fit on that one, but exactly the same thing. Cap it off just to be safe.